Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Today we will have a workshop on academic writing. Uh, my colleague, Ms. Bothaina uh, Kodachi, will be joining us today. She is a specialist in English language, like mainly for academic writing. She will be supporting us and trying to give some kind of help. Okay? Uh, for this session today, we will, by the end of this session, it's expected that you will be able to identify the common mistakes that students generally make while uh, writing their assignments. Uh, also, you will be judging on your quality of academic writing. How could you evaluate your uh, writing based on the exercise that we will go through? Also, uh, you will be able to identify the meaning of scientific citation. What's the meaning of citation? What kind of citation that we need to use? What's the value of sign citations? How could we quote others' material? What ways we can be using these kind of things to avoid the big issue, which is plagiarism. Plagiarism means stealing others' work. Yeah, there is a severe punishment for people or students who commit these kind of crimes. Uh, also, you will know how to write references and resources that you are using in your writing. So it will um, help you to know the professional way in writing references. Okay. Uh, before I start my uh, talk, I will launch some questions that you need to think about them. Okay. The first question, how do you evaluate your, your academic writing skills? I would like you to judge on your quality of writing. Second, are there any specific mistakes that you generally make? Have you tried to fix them? What are the key steps of academic writing? Can you put them in order? Step one, step two, step three, etc. What's the purpose of writing? Why we write? What's the reason of writing? Do you have something in your mind when you start writing? These kind of questions should be on the table before you draft your essay. What's the meaning of plagiarism? How have you committed such a crime, such an issue? How did you fix it? Uh, also, what's the meaning of citation? How many types of citation that can be use it. Finally, is there any limit for the quantity of material that you will be using in your essay? That I mean, sometimes some students, they take a lot of material, they put the material in their assignment, they pretend the material is theirs. So these kind of things uh, should be avoided because the material is not yours. These are seven questions that you need to think about them when you uh, start writing about any idea in your mind. Uh, feedback. I have marked your assignments. I spent around four hours reading them, reading between lines, try to extract as much meaning as possible. And I've discovered a lot of parts that should be covered during this session. So that was the starting point of my preparation for this uh, workshop. Feedback, the first thing, understand the required task. Some students, they don't really understand the meaning or the, uh, the main task needed from them for that assignment. Some of them will start writing, rambling writings, scratch from here and there, put them and submit the material. Others, they answer the uh, question properly. Also, spelling mistakes is put some of uh, some papers, there is some kind of mistakes, mainly um, terms of spelling mistakes for uh, um, writing some words, verbs, tenses, punctuations, column, semicolon, this kind of uh, academic writing techniques. Sentence structure, some of students, they don't know how to give a clear meaning by writing the right sentence to send a message. So it's very important to know what's about, what kind of parts that you need to use 
when writing a, a sentence first. Then move to the uh, paragraph. Paragraph itself, uh, some, uh, there is some uh, sentences you can combine them together to give one meaning in one paragraph. Then we will move to another step, which is you have many paragraphs, you need to connect them all together to give meaning, give a meaning, a clear meaning through what we call a say or a pay one page writing, piece of writing. So you have sentence, you have paragraph, you have paragraphs, just all of them you need them to send a message. So this is, uh, has to be written in a clear way. Paragraph linkage or a flow of your writing, this is very important. Capital letters, small letters, sometimes you find the student uh, write, start with small letters. And this is wrong, you should start with capital letter and move to the rest of your writing. Uh, font size and spaces. I discovered that many students have problem with text alignment. Um, they use different format. This is an issue because of copying and pasting. Taking from this website, taking from that, that document, there is a variety of formats in one page. So you need to make your, uh, you have a kind of consistency in your writing, but consistent, not just copying and pasting. You have to format your writing to make it just one uh, one block. Uh, page numbers, yes, another issue. Some of students, they write their assignment, they did everything well. The problem is no numbers there. So I have to put them in order based on the content, not based on the sequential numbers of the uh, numbers themselves. Text alignment, as I mentioned, citations, yes. Citations, when you take something, when you, write about, when you define something, or you know, to talk about something, you bring evidence from the teacher, do your best to write the author's name, surname, year, page number maybe. Yeah, this kind of thing is just to support your argument. So just writing a definition or maybe general idea without supporting your writing, make it a little bit weak. So for at your level now, you need to make a kind of rational judgment on something supported by evidence. So try to uh, cite your work by maybe direct quotations or indirect quotations. In all cases, you need to uh, use uh, references or citations to support your writing. Punctuations, they are very important to give a clear meaning. When I should use comma, when I should semicolon, when I should use uh, uh, maybe uh, bricks or uh, maybe a stroke or hyphen or something, these kind of techniques or tools. I have to know how could I use them? Why is, do, why is it to send the message as should be? Tenses, another issue. Some students use past, that's fantastic. Others use past continuous. Past continuous, you should not be using this unless there is a reason. If there is two events happening in the past, one preceding the other, in that case, you might use present continuous. Sometimes you need to use past perfect because as action is started and continue to the moment. In that case, you need to connect the past with the present. So you need to know when I should use tenses to express the real meaning, to send a clear message to the audience. So this is another issue I have spotted in some of your uh, uh, piece of writing. Uh, another issue is the organization of the writing. It's very important to make your writing organized. You have uh, title, main title, you have subtitle, you have sub subtitle. Each title should cover something and you should have a kind of sequential numbers. Let's say 1.1, 1.2, 1 1.3, then move to 1.3.1, 1.3.2, 1 1 etc. to make your writing understandable, clear, and written in a very professional organized way. Uh, a flow of text, yes, it's very important. A flow reflects to what extent you are mastering the idea in your mind. If you understand something in your mind, you organize it to your mind, then you can write it or, or very organized way. Otherwise, it will be difficult, difficult for you to organize something on the table. Just you have rambling writing, many pieces of writing, you could bring them all together to make a, a clear meaning, that will be difficult for you. The idea is read, process, understand, then you can write. 
Otherwise, it, was, it will be difficult for you. Because in this case, there is no processing, there is no understanding. It will be difficult for you to understand or to master the issue before you start about something. So, a text flow means that you come from general broad idea to narrow it down till you uh, go to the focus of your writing. Or vice versa, you might start with something very, very specific and go to broaden it a little bit until you reach to the large uh, scale you want to write about. Depth of the content, another issue. Some of you, they cover the question very, very well in a very scientific way. Others, they try to charge it very, 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 very basic uh, depth. So because you need to cover the question answered very well, then in that case, some of you uh, didn't do this well. As I mentioned, titles and subtitles. Yes, there is another issue I spotted, which is there is similarities between some of the students and their answers, as if they are they have been studying together. Studying together, that's something good. But writing the same questions, same answers, this is something we don't prefer generally. We prefer to see the level of your way of thinking, your writing, your personality, your individuality, this kind of things you would like to see them in your writing. So I have spotted even some mistakes that cannot be repeated. I found them repeated. That means huh? a kind of repeating other work maybe. So please, this should be avoided. Requesting Marcus, other student, he was asking for questions, asking for more markers, asking for some kind of things, which something we, uh, maybe this is later on, be requested, but not at this moment. Uh, excuses for failure in fulfilling the requirements. There are another issue, which is, you know, this is because of your uh, commitment somewhere else, or your uh, full, maybe, schedule, or your family issues, other things. Uh, last thing about the reference list. It's very important for you because you are at the uh, preliminary stage now. You would like to write about something, so you should have made some kind of research. You collected some references. You put them on the table. Just write it and speak to as if you are speaking to yourself. Say, this is the reference that I'm going to use. This is very important to make sure you have some kind of assurance that you have resource that can, you can uh, refer back and use them in your writing. So these kind of uh, points that I could extract from your writings to prepare our session today. Clear? Okay. Uh, uh, what we have more today, we will divide our session to uh, maybe four parts, I think, if I'm right. The first one I have started with discussing the general idea of the uh, workshop today. I have covered some feedback that I have uh, detected, taken from your uh, markers, your papers. I will give them to you back to look at your assignments. The next thing that we will be discussing today, we have uh, a fantastic piece of uh, maybe a story about a Greek friend, he was studying with you in Greek, maybe in uh, Athenas, some time ago, and he wanted to come to Libya to visit you to conduct a research funded by EU in Libya in healthcare management, and you will be welcoming him to visit you in Libya and uh, maybe give him some kind of support or a hand, okay? So this friend will be will be staying in Benghazi for some time and you will helping him in his mission. So we will be writing about this for maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes and we will, after that, we will move on and check your writing. We will spot any mistakes there. We try to fix them based on individual writing for each one of you. Okay? There's another part of our work. Uh, next that we will have uh, material already prepared for you. We will go through the material as what I did right now to show you these uh, things that you need in your writing. Clear? Okay, now 
I'm going to give you your papers back. Look at them for maximum of two, three minutes and send them back to me, return them to me, okay? Okay? Look at your uh, paper, okay? And just spot the mistake is uh, the high point that I already highlighted in red is already covered now. So this is your mistake, so avoid them in the future. Okay, clear? There is no penalty for this assignment. Just a kind of helping you to avoid them in the coming exercise. Is that clear? Okay. So uh, you have a scenario and you have to follow the steps of this scenario. So as uh, Dr. Sabri said, you have to um, write a, a friend or a friend of yours from Greek. Uh, he uh, wants to come to Libya and you have to write according to the scenario that you have. All right? So you can start. just uh, a moment from you. Now, uh, most of the students uh, ask about, is it formal or informal? It's up to you. You want it to be formal or informal, okay? So if it's formal, you have to like write a letter and uh, to ask the organization or to approve about uh, coming to Libya, okay? So this is like, keep it formal. But if it's like informal, then this is a personal, uh, personal uh, arrangements with, uh, with your friend, okay? So it's up to you, as you like. Now, uh, the second question uh, about punctuation marks. Uh, it takes only maybe five to 10 minutes. So I would like you, you have two questions. The first one, which is matching, okay? Match the punctuation with their uh, usages. And the second one, which is you have to write the punctuation mark. We have like maybe five or six sentences without punctuation. So please uh, put them in the sentence, all right? The writing assignment and the main purpose that now we discover our own mistakes. What we should do, right? What can happen to us? Analyze our own mistakes. And by moving around both, uh, both Ms. Bukaina and me, we kind of see, notice the main mistakes. The, the biggest one and the, the first one that we all would do, the people who study English, people who are natives in English, they tend to get excited and they go ahead and start with a question, answering the question. Read it once, twice, three times, that's okay. If you don't understand the question, you will never get uh, a good mark. So if you don't understand, ask. Okay? Step number two. Uh, getting excited and writing down without planning your answers. So what do I want to write? Uh, some, uh, sorry, I forgot the names, but the one in black shirt uh, did an amazing job in organizing the text. What does he want to say? 
He started by the introduction. He started by the pleasantry. It's, hi, my friend, how are you? Then moved to the main body. Then he moved to the main body and then to the conclusion. How can you do this? By analyzing your answer in your head. Next part, the grammar, punctuations, vocabulary, all of this. So the planning is actually a huge part. Could be even 50% of you, the mark you get is all because did you plan correctly or not? Whatever time you invest, it's not lost, it's not lost time. It's actually invested time. Uh, and the next part will be with Ms. Putaina. She's going to have an, a very informative presentation about academic writing. The beginning will be a bit theoretical, but then it will go in depth about the second question, which was punctuations and the kind of uh, specific mistakes that we make. Uh, one last thing I want to do. I want to say writing is not uh, a gift. No one is born, uh, is born a good writer. You have to, it's a skill. You have to master it. You have to practice, 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 practice. You're going to make a ton of mistakes. You're still going to make a ton of mistakes, even if you're a native. Just uh, the more you practice, the less mistakes you have. Accept those mistakes and accept the, the fact that you're going to make them. And then it will uh, help you through it. Good luck. Uh, hi, everyone, again. My name is Bethaina Kulachi and uh, I will uh, talk about the academic writing. Now, uh, we will, uh, the first part will be theoretical and the second part about uh, the most common mistakes that students face in writing, which is like punctuation, tense and uh, also spelling. So, let's start. So, uh, as we said, the first part will be about the academic writing. Uh, we have two types of uh, uh, academic writing, students and experts. Um, also, we will talk about the four stages of academic writing. And then the uh, mistakes. So, um, from your own perspective, what is academic writing? Participants. Formal writing. Formal writing, very good. What else? It should be scientific, yes. Research. Researching, yes. Um, uh, so what's the difference between formal and informal? About facts. Yes, yes. Yes, vocabulary, the structure, the, uh, the person that you're addressing uh, uh, the content to. So very good, yes. Now, academic writing is very formal style of writing, and it's the hardest. Okay, um, so both for experts and students. Now the purpose of academic writing is, as we said, to communicate ideas, uh, research, findings, etc. Now let's go to the first type, which is students' academic writing. So students' academic writing, uh, mainly about the, uh, the evaluation, the assessment. Okay, for example, the teacher gives, for example, a specific topic about the student's major and they have to start research. Now, why we do this? Because uh, to build like, uh, uh, kind of like to have uh, information, to collect information, to also analyze and criticize in order to be what? Experts. So these are the most important things. By, like, as we, we know, like practice makes perfect. So you have to practice in writing in order to be expert, which is, this is the second part. What is expert academic writing? Now, expert academic writing here, uh, the, the type is to convey or con to convey a certain information or research findings. Why the experts uh, do some researches? in order to persuade or convince the audience, okay? Uh, and if their research is approved, then they will like published in, uh, yes, it will, be, it will be published in uh, websites, journals, and books. Now, the importance of academic writing for master students. Now, here we have five points. If you uh, know how to improve these five points, you will be, inshallah, expert. Now, uh, the first one, uh, which is critical thinking. And I think you know what's critical thinking, right? Okay. So, uh, so you have to think deeply in the topic. 
the, 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 the research that you, are, you want to do. The second one, which is you have to be professional, uh, which is like also objective. And then you have to research, you have to start doing uh, uh, your uh, research. And then we have the problem solving. The problem solving, of course, you have a problem and you have to what? To find a solution for this problem. And this will like raise the critical thinking of, uh, of this skill. And then we have the last one, which is the results. After you master the, the first four, you will, be, uh, you will have a final result. Now, without, like, if you uh, applied all these uh, points and skills, is your writing um, going to be perfect? If you applied these five in your research, are you going to be a good writer or a good, no? Why? It's not enough. Yes. yes. Now, if you write a perfect writing, a perfect research, without the importance of the writing, which is the structure, if you don't know what's punctuation, what's tense, you know a lot of information, but you don't know how to apply the basic, it will be useless right now. So, the stages. Now, before we start going to the structure, I want to know the stages of writing. Are you familiar with what are the stages of writing? We have four stages. Introduction. Uh, these are the components. The first one, which is pre uh, writing. Pre writing, okay? Pre means what? Before. Very good. So, pre writing, this is, this, is, this is the first one. And then we have uh, the, uh, the first draft. The second draft, maybe you can write maybe three or four drafts. And then you will go to editing. And the last one, which is the final draft, that you will hand it to the teacher. So the pre-writing stage, as we said, um, you have to think about the topic. Uh, for my students, sometimes I told them to draw a sun. OK, you know, like the basic sun, which is sun and lines. OK, and told them to write the topic in the middle. And then think about the ideas, write them in the lines. And then you have to, uh, to, ha you have to think, um, is this idea useful? Is this extra? Maybe I add something else, okay? So this is the pre-writing stage. It will like, um, it's helped you to uh, uh, order your uh, topic ideas also. The second one, which is the writing stage, as we said, it's first a draft and uh, proofreading as well. So in the first draft, you have to write. Don't think about the grammar. Don't, write, uh, don't, th don't think about the spelling, the punctuation. Just write, OK? And then we have uh, the editing part. After you, you feel like, OK, my piece of writing is good. Now I have to add uh, all the information. I included all the information, all the uh, findings, all the research. Now I have to what to do the most important part. So they are like twins, okay? The second part, is, which is the editing, grammar, punctuation, spelling. So they're like uh, mixed together. And then, which is improving, okay? Yeah, as uh, Hiba said, I like this one. Writing is a skill, not a gift. Yeah, especially for like experts. Um, yeah, now we will move to the most important part, which is the common mistakes in writing. Punctuation marks, run on, comma supplies, fragments and tenses. Now, punctuation marks. Um, what is the function or the purpose of punctuation mark in general? Separate. Join sentence, yeah. separate sentence. Yeah. Organize the sentences. Very good. Yes, yes. Arrange your ideas. Nice. What's the meaning of punctuation? What's the meaning of punctuation? Yes. What's the meaning of punctuation? Put them in order. Yeah, uh, uh, it depends on the usage, maybe. Yes, yes that's true. Now, um, we will cover, uh, I think, five. 
comma, semicolon, colon, apostrophe, and period. Of course, we have like uh, 15 punctuation marks in English, but right now we'll cover only these. Maybe in another workshop, we might uh, cover the rest. Comma. So, comma, it's very important in academic writing and in general, of course. Now, when we use the comma, we have, of course, by the way, um, a lot of usages. But I only talk about um, uh, two usages. The first one, to join two independent clauses. And what does it mean, independent? Independent clause. Independent clause, a clause that has subject, verb, it can stand alone and gives you a full meaning. Example, let's say um, Helen wanted to get a bobby. Here, we have what? We have subject, we have verb. What's the subject here? Helen, Helen the verb? Wanted. wanted. Okay, so, and does it give you a meaning? No. Helen, yeah. now don't, don't look at the second one, only the first one, Helen wanted to get, to get a bobby. It gives you a full meaning. It can stand alone. Yeah. I'm talking to you and said, oh, Helen uh, wanted to get uh, a bobby, or wants to get a bobby. So it can't stand alone. So this is what? This is independent clause. Now, if I want to join two independent clauses, the second one here, uh, she's allergic to dog fur. I can say, because of the native uh, speakers, they don't like to repeat themselves. So they say what? What we say, oh, the original of the sentence, Helen wanted to get a bobby. Uh, Helen is allergic to dog, uh, to dog fur. Now here, um, the, the English people, they don't like to use the redundancy or repeating the same words. So they replaced she, uh, Helen with she. Okay, and now these two words, I want them to join together. So in this case, I have to use comma, but not only comma. I have to use also something called coordinating conjunctions. Now, what are the con con coordinating conjunctions? There is uh, another word that is super easy, you can remember, which is... Fanboys. F indicates for, for, A, and, N, nor, B, but, O, or, Y, yet, S, so. These we call them coordinating conjunctions. These we use them if I have two independent clauses and I want them to be together, joined together. So I use comma and then one of the coordinating conjunctions, let's say and. But it's a must to use and, and comma between these two independent clauses. So here we have the first sentence. The exam was difficult. The exam, which is here, the subject, was? Difficult. Was what? What, what part of a speech is this? Verb. Verb and difficult. Now, when we look at this sentence alone, does it give you a full meaning? Yes. 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 Let's see the second. But all the wait, wait, wait. I didn't write both. Okay. All the students passed. Also, it gives you a full meaning. Subject and a verb. But I want them to be combined together. So what should I do here? You said this is independent and also this one is what? Independent. So in this case, what's the right fanboys that I can use here? Yes. Now, the second one. Oh. Uh, after an introductory dependent clause. Mm. So we finish with independent. Let's move to dependent. What does it mean dependent? Dependent. Yes. Yes. For example, like um, dependent itself means like maybe the child depend, depends on, on, his, on his mom. Right, for example, in his mom or in his father. So, depend, this is in depend, like can't stand alone. We need someone to take care, yes. So the same thing, dependent can't stand alone. We need independent 
clause. So what we said, dependent, it can't stand alone. Let's see this. Since I was tired, only look at this sentence. Since I was tired. Does it give you a full meaning? No. no. But we have subject and a verb, right? Yes. No. We have subject. What, where is the subject? Tired. Tired. Subject. Tired. Was. Uh, sorry, I. I. And verb? I. Was. was. Oh. Okay. So since I was tired. This, when we like say it, it can't stand alone. It doesn't give you a full meaning. So it needs to, re to rely on something else. So since I was tired, I decided to go to bed. Uh, here, I have a full meaning. That's correct. So in this case, should I use fanboys? No. No. Only? Only? Yes, only comma. So let's re re revise again. So we have here two independent, sorry. And then we have to use what? Conjunctions or subordinating conjunctions, sorry, uh, coordinating conjunctions. Example and. The second one, the second usage of comma, when we have dependent and independent. But we don't use coordinating conjunctions or the fanboys. No. So, is it clear or not? Okay, I'm going to ask. Now, the second one, introductory words. What does it mean, introductory words? Like, overall, however, um, what's, uh, um, uh, what's more, okay? So these are introductory words to introduce an independent clause. So, example here, overall, the meeting was informative. So overall, after it, this is introductory word. So we use after it, comma. But it's not necessary to use fanboys. So these are the two usages of comma. And I need someone to give me one example about two independent clauses. Anyone? Or should I choose? Ah, this is a nightmare. <laughs> I want to go to the gym. I want to go to the gym. Okay. That's fully independent sentence. Yes. Uh, I want to go to, to the gym. Um, you can say. So I will lose my weight. By the way. I so I. Uh, like fat. So don't say don't say fat. <laughs> So, so I will lose my weight. So I will lose my weight. This is for uh, results. Yes, I want it, or I want to go to the gym, but first I have to finish uh, the housework. Okay, nice, very good. Now the second one, which is uh, dependent. Now let me give you a, a, a hint. When we use dependent with subordinating conjunctions, so now we have two names coordinating conjunctions, which is what we call them, fanboys. And superordinated conjunctions, what we call them, uh, wabbit. Like rabbit, okay, wabbit. Okay, let me uh, write them here. Uh, wabbit. Uh, wabbit, W for, indicates for when, where. Uh, A for uh, after, okay. Uh, B for, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, before, I, F, T for, um, uh, no, two also, it's a prepositional pre pre uh, word, so yes, okay, so also though, though, F, before, after, when, or where. So if we have tons of subordinated conjunctions, but uh, like since, as long as, okay, although, though, all these we call them uh, before, when, after. So all of these are subordinated conjunctions. And uh, the, the fanboys are subordinating or coordinating? Coordinating. coordinating. Okay. And when we use the uh, coordinating conjunctions with two independent or? Two independent. What about the wabbit? 
dependent and independent. Example, um, for example, oh, because also this is uh, one of the subordinating. Because I was driving fast, I had a car accident. When I say because I had a car, uh, because I was driving fast, is this a, like this sentence gives a full meaning? No. no. So it, it should what? Rely to another sentence, which is I was driving fast because what? I had, a, uh, I had a car accident. So I had a car accident. This is independent because I, I was fast or driving fast. This is dependent. So um, yeah, these are the two usages of the comma. And let's move to the second one, apostrophe. Super easy apostrophe. Um, the two usages of this, uh, possessions and contractions. Now, with possessions, we don't, uh, we use it for uh, something mine, okay? Let's say uh, um, Hiba's bag. So the bag is not for me, the bag for Hiba. So uh, semicolon, uh, we connect two independent clauses, okay? Semicolon, uh, sorry for the, uh, the title. We have independent, two. It's a must to use two independent. And the semicolon. But when do we use them? If the sentence is uh, connected, they talk about the same idea, okay? The same perspective, the same, uh, let's say, research. So if they are connected to each other, we use semicolon. Example, quality is not an act, it's a habit. Yeah. Can you speak up? Can I have? Including, yeah, you want, is it like one uh, list or a lot of lists? Uh, a lot of lists, including uh, mm. uh, investigation, including uh, like MRI, CT, CBC, or? Yeah, yeah, also it's correct. Now, uh, thank you. Now, can you give me example of semicolon, like two independent clauses related to the same topic, to the same idea? Yes? Football is not a game, it's a lifestyle. Nice, very good, it's also correct. Now, the second one, Colin, which is Colin, uh, uh, one dot or two dots? Two dots. Yes, okay. Now, to introduce a list of things after an independent clause. Example, you need three qualities to be a professional doctor. Now, this one, is independent clause. You need three qualities to be a professional doctor. And then you want to what? To list. What are these qualities? So in this case, we use what? Colin. Integrity, empathy, and morality. So it's a must to use with Colin independent clause. OK? Um, another thing. When you find or when you want to use the following and as follows, these are keywords for using Colin. Um, let's say the following uh, symptoms are related to COVID-19. The following symptoms are uh, related to COVID-19. And then I want to what? To talk about these symptoms. Exactly. I bought Colin. And then fever, headache, and I mentioned them. Is it clear? Clear? I'm going to ask. OK. So uh, the second part, oh, uh, and there is something here. Uh, with words like namely, for example, for instance, however, they're not very common with Colin. We don't use Colin in these words, OK? Apostrophe. Now, apostrophe for sessions. As I said, he was uh, back, okay? So, uh, we use them also for contractions. So, the student's essay is flawless. Now, the essay is not for me, of course, for the student. In this case, we have to use possessive. 
Um, but contractions, what are contractions? Contractions. Yes. Cannot. Not cannot, they have isn't. to be. Isn't. Okay, or let's say, also, let's say they, there. Now this is contraction. She's, um, aren't, hasn't. okay, hasn't. All these are contractions, but bear in mind that we don't use them in academic writing. It's not correct. So instead, we have to write like this. They are, cannot, okay? So it's a must to, to not use contractions in academic writing because it sounds informal, you know? Like we use them with family, friends maybe. And then the second one, uh, period or full stop, two names, okay? Someone asked me about the period and full stop. One is British, one is American. Um, and when do we use them? The end of declarative statement, very good. Okay, example, working in medicine can be time consuming yet rewarding. So full stop. But I have a question. Do you see yet? And yet, what is it yet? It's from the Wabbit or Fanboys? Fanboys. And we said we use them with comma, right? We said it's a must to use comma before them. But why we don't have here? Okay, let's see. Uh, le let, me re let me remind you again, fanboys. We use before them, comma. And one of them is yet, right? And yet is here, but before it, we don't have comma. Why? Thank you. Now, the first one, working in medicine can be time consuming. Now, working in medicine, this is what? This is working medicine together. Is it subject or verb? Subject. Subject. Can be verb, time consuming, which is the object. After that, we have yet rewarding. Rewarding, is it a full sentence? No. Uh -huh. So in this case, we don't use comma. Okay? Uh, all right. Uh huh. Run on. Run on. Do you know what's, what does it mean, run on? Run on. You don't know. Okay. So, run on. When we have two independent clauses, but without comma, without full stop, without, without punctuation mark. Now, this is a big mistake that students face in academic writing. Example. Run on, a sentence of two. It's a must to use two independent. So, we're talking about... This one, independent, as we said, it has subject, it has verb, it can stand alone and gives you what? A full? So, um, yeah. Do you see the first example? The police saw the robber exit the store. They chased him. It's a wrong sentence because we don't have here what? Punctuation. How can I correct such a mistake? Um, okay. The police. Can you uh, tell me the sentence? So or chase? So. So the robber and then? Okay. So the robber after robber exits. Exits the store. And then they chased him. Do we have one? Um, do we have one sentence or two sentences? We have two sentences. Where is the first one? It starts from the police to, to the store. Okay, this is the first sentence. The second one? The store 
So uh, the no, they. Oh yeah, yeah. So so sorry. The store, and then they chased him. Okay, is this independent? Yes. The second one. Dependent. I can I can I can uh, take it back to the original sentence, which is the police chased the robber. Dependent. Uh, sorry, independent. Yes. It gives you a full meaning here. Now, how can I correct them? I have three methods. The first one, which is the easiest one, and I don't recommend it because for beginners, which is you put full stop, and then the second word should be what? Capital. Capital. But don't use it a lot, okay? The second one, semicolon. And the second word, or the second word, the first letter, uh, small. small. The third met method, which is, if I have two independent clause, we use comma after it what? Conjunction. conjunction, thank you. So what's the right conjunction here? So, so uh, the police, so the robber exit the store, so they chased them, yes. And they chased him, also correct. So these are the three methods to correct run-on sentence. Is it clear? Okay. Okay. Um, I need someone to tell me what are the uh, what is run on run on sentence and how can can I correct it? Okay, I'm going to choose. So yes. Okay. Yes. What is run on sentence? No, no, no. In general, what is run on? Is it dependent and independent or too independent? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, too independent? Yes. Like yes, 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 yes. Uh, and, um, and the mistake, uh, what, what's the mistake? Without any punctuation marks. Now, this is wrong, and how can I correct it? Thank you so much. Yes, do you want to say them? All right. No, no, no. Yes, yes, okay, how can I correct it? So by three methods? Uh-huh, what's the first method? Uh, first, we use the full stop. Uh-huh, and, uh, and the second uh, word should be the first letter? Capital. Capital, the second one? Uh, semicolon. Semicolon, <coughs> and uh, the second uh, word, small. the first capital or small? Small, small. okay. Or a comma with the... Uh, Fanboys. Uh, fan yes, so this is the first mistake for two independent clauses. The second one, comma supplies. What's comma supplies? Which is two independent sentences with comma. Now this is wrong. I have to write what? Fanboys. Uh, fanboys, yes. So it's also not accurate to connect two complete sentences with a comma. So how can I correct such a mistake? Okay, look at this example. Rabies is already viral infection. It is spread through the bite of an infected animal. I have here two independent sentences. Both of them has subject, verb, it can stand alone and gives you a full meaning. But we have one issue, the comma. How can I correct it? Also, with following what? The three methods. The first one, which is full stop. The second one, which is Semicolon. The third one? Fanboys. Adding, yes, the fanboys. Okay? Easy? All right. Fragments. Fragments means like the, the word fragment itself means part. Part, yes. And this part doesn't give you a full meaning. So we, we know it before. Is it dependent or independent? Dependent, yes. <laughs> Fragment? Yes. Completes the meaning? Or is incomplete? It's complete. If we have independent, of course. Yes. Okay. Now, when I say, do you remember because I was driving fast? Okay. 
When I say because I was driving fast, does it give you a give meaning, uh, a full meaning? No. no. So I have to have what? Another sentence that is strong, which is what? Independent, excellent. So let's see the fragments here. So fragments is a group of words that does not express a complete thought. What we call it? Dependent. It's not allowed in formal writing, in academic writing, and it's necessary to write a complete sentence after it or before it. So, without knowing any details. When you say this, without knowing any details, it can't, it doesn't, it's not like a complete sentence, you know? So I have to use what? Another independent. So let's see here, without knowing any details, I responded to the cry of hell for, me, for my neighbor. Now here, it's an independent sentence, and we use here comma. Let me write my sentence, which is because I was driving fast. Um, okay, let me have it like this. And then I had a car accident. This one is dependent or independent? Dependent. And this one? Independent. independent. What should we use between them? Only comma. Can I switch the sentences? Yes. OK. I had a car accident. Should I use because, like here, and before it, comma? Without comma. Excellent. So if I'm using the dependent clause at the beginning of a sentence, it's a must to use what here? Oh. Comma. But if it's at the second, which is here, we don't use any punctuation marks. OK? Clear? Good. Tenses. Now, um, we have four types of tenses. This is the last uh, section, so yeah. OK, so we have four types of tenses that are very common in academic writing. Can you tell me what are they? The four tenses in academic writing. Past, Past symbol. Present symbol. Present symbol. Uh, OK, but the most common ones, we can use them, yes. Present perfect. It's very common. Present perfect and passive. OK, so uh, let's start with the first one, which is past symbol. When do we use past symbol? Uh, general uses. Habit. Very good. Something that happened in the past and finished. Yes. Um, present symbol. Facts. Very good. Uh, habits, daily routine, repeated action. OK. Um, present perfect. Very good. Something happened in the past and still going on. Example, um, I lived in Libya for uh, 17 years. So from the past till now. OK. And the last one, passive. When do we use passive? Hmm. Yes, without the agent, okay? We call it the agent. The person who did the action is the agent. So we focus more on what? On the object. Very good. Now, um, let's see how we use the tenses, these four tenses in academic. Past symbol. Reporting findings of past research. If I want to talk about past research, I use past symbol. Example, Donald Trump's election in 2016 uh, contradicted the, uh, the, predict the prediction of commentators. So I'm talking here about fact, but having the bust. So I use past symbol. The second one, prison symbol, describing facts, generalizations, and explanation. Okay? Older people express less concern about the environment than younger people. I'm talking here about what? About fact. About fact in the present. And then prison perfect. 
So here we uh, join the past research to my recent research. So in this case, we use prism, prism perfect. And the last one, passive, focus on the results or the research or the finding more than the person itself. So region was added to the sample. Now, I can say regions were added to the sample by scientists, but I don't care. I don't want to say it. Or it's a useless information. Yes. So also the news, yes. So these are the four tenses that we should use. And in conclusion, finally. So uh, conclusion, uh, we covered the theoretical part, which is what is academic writing. And we said it's a formal and it's the hardest one. Also, we talked about the four stages. What are the four stages? Pre-writing, Pre first draft, editing, and the final draft. And then we talked also about the common mistakes, which is what? Punctuation, um, run-on, comma supplies, and tenses. Thank you so much. Today is just a starting. We haven't started yet. Just to open the discussion, try to break the ice between you and writing. Because it's a big issue for you to write a good piece of, of work. Uh, when I mark students' assignments and essays and dissertations, I focus too much on these minor things. For me, it's not a major thing, it's, it's a serious one for me. So you will lose uh, uh, big marks because of these minors. Uh, if you want to get a bridge license, bridge license for driving, if you commit 16 faults while you are driving, they will consider them as a serious mistake. You will be banned from driving in the whole EU countries. So for me, in my case, these minors will become major then be serious. So please, for the first assignment, there will be no penalties at all. But from now and on, please bear in mind, you need to consider this. When you should use punctuations, how to write proper sentence, a good paragraph, how to connect paragraphs with each other, how to come up, up with a good piece of research that I could understand your writing. The basic thing is to have an idea you'd like to write about, try to have some kind of elements. This is before you start writing, and then take each one independently and cover that very uh, intensively, okay? Uh, last thing about our uh, talk today is to very briefly talk about citations, because you need this. Citations, you have two key things, direct quotations, and in direct quotations. When it's very important for your case to avoid plagiarism, uh, stealing others' work, is to cite work from uh, any resource you have been using in your writing, okay? So just write the source that you are quoting from or take something from that resource. Here we have direct quotation and indirect quotation. Direct quotation and indirect quotation, two things. You need to use them wisely. Sometimes it's very critical for you to support your argument with something conclusive, evidence-based argument. So let's say Benghazi is the best city in the world. Who said that? George, in the year 2023, page 10. So this is, huh? this is direct, citation. this is direct quotation. This is direct quotation because we have Sentence, huh? we have sentence, we have sentence, we have quotations like this, huh? between quotations, okay? And we have here, George, 2023, page 10. So this is, we call this direct quotation. Sometimes it's very important for you to give a message to the reader or to the instructor that I have my own evidence to support my argument. Look, look, go and check this in this book. It's already the reference list, uh, year 2023, page 10. If you go to that page, open the book, 
pasting, he will find your cited for quotation. Very simple. So this is direct quotation. Direct quotation, okay? So you cite something to support your argument. Look, if you make some changes, minor changes, keeping the same meaning, huh? you might play with the words, but the meaning is the same exactly as it is. In that case, we call this in direct quotation. In direct quotation. In this case, we remove quotations. Huh? No need for these quotations. And we remove also base number. It becomes like this. Surname here. That's it. Surname and year. That's it. Fantastic now. You have surname and year with, have, with, with no quotations. So this we call this, huh? we call this in direct quotation. So you have direct quotation and the direct. You to be balanced when you, use, you write something, use both of them wisely. The issue is, I find many students, they use in direct quotation. In reality, it's direct, but they remove page numbers. This is a serious issue because sometimes I need to check this myself. I need to go to the book or the reference to check this myself just to be assured. So in that case, there's no, despite the fact, it's already quoted as it is. It's a direct quotation. But the student remove the page number. So please don't do this. It's a direct, make it direct. Indirect, make it indirect. Clear? OK. Last point before I finish my talk is about being wise when you quote something. Let's say I have assignment. I have to write assignment. I was requested to write, let's say, 1,000 words assignment. OK. I Google. I went to the um, Google, maybe, or Google Scholar, or journals, or articles, or articles, and I got some information from, there. from them. I wrote them an essay. OK. Imagine the material taken from my resources exceeded maybe 90 percent. <coughs> now the whole work is stolen. Plagiarism. I have exit checker my laptop. I will check it right now. I will get the report for this revision. The plagiarized material may be 90 percent, 80 percent. Globally, the acceptable level is 20 percent. If you want to submit a paper to a journal or a conference, it will be rejected. If reach, it reaches 20 percent, it will be rejected. If it's a dissertation, it will be rejected as well. The first time, you have one, one time, only once, to submit your dissertation. You will fail if this happens for the second time, because it's an offense, it's a crime. Some in Britain, some of them were, were prisoned for this, because the uh, stolen address material, without proper acknowledgement. OK? So you need to avoid the plagiarism by using citation, direct and indirect. That's it. And acknowledgement, a proper acknowledgement. You have reference list, list at the end, put them order it alphabetically in a very concise and uh, precise way. OK? Last point is about being balanced between the material that you are producing and the material that you are taking from resources. So the ideal, the ideal may be percent between 20 to 25 taken from resources. The other material should be taken, produced by you. So not, not the other way around. 70 percent taken from material and you only came up with just 25 percent. That's unacceptable. It has to be the other way around. So make it balanced and make it um, uh, based on a argument, based on evidence. Support your idea with evidence. If you say something, provide an evidence. Let, let's go, example. If I say Benghazi is the best country, uh, the best city in, in, in the world. This is an allegation. Someone, yes. Yes. Benghazi, the best city? No. Never happens. It's even when you are sleeping and dreaming. Now, I have something. I have evidence. Look, this is yours. He said this. 
In 2023, he visited Benghazi. He visited the eastern part of the country, and he said this, based on a proof, based on maybe mountain visit or something like this. Who said this? So it's not allegation. It's not reality because I have my own proof, evidence. Okay. So if you claim something, if you say something about your assignment, about business development, about uh, innovation management, about whatever, huh? you have to support your argument with evidence and put to align with that, put your reference or your resources. Is that clear? Okay, last thing, every time I say last thing, okay? Uh, we will have another session maybe uh, in two weeks time. That session will focus on literature review because it's very connected with this one, okay? But today, because it's very, very important for you to start with, because you cannot try to interview without having this in your mind, okay? Uh, we, I will put this on the model. You can do this exercise on your own free time. Is that okay? So, uh, last thing, last thing, okay. Uh, I would like to thank you all, okay? And we will uh, arrange another meeting with Dr. Abdelbasit in two weeks' time. Thank you very much.